Next year's 14 is finally out and it's that time of the year again where we will check out all the exciting features and enhancement in Next.js 14 so you can be more comfortable building Next.js applications. Now, luckily for us, there are no new APIs, but there are still quite a few features that they have introduced in Next.js 14 that we'll take a look at in this specific video. So let's dive in. You will find this blog on the Next.js website where they discuss all the changes that have come out of Next.js 14. So now let's take a look at it one by one. Now here you can see that we have a few changes in Turbo Pack, Server Actions, Partial Pre-Rendering, and a Next.js new a course on that. So let's take a look at it one by one. So the first one being Turbo Pack. Now Turbo Pack is a Rust compiler that, that, that came out of Next.js in a previous version. Now they have been working really hard to make it stable so that it can provide us all the necessary features of Next.js and give us a really fast developer environment. Now, you can see that they are really working hard and 500,000 integration tests for Next Dev are now passing with Turbo Pack with their underlying Rust engine. So this is really exciting because you can see that they have tested Versal.com, which is a huge Next.js application and now it's 53.3% faster local server setup and 94.7% faster code updates with fast refresh, which is amazing. I'm really excited for Turbo Pack in general, just because the sooner Turbo Pack gets stable in an upcoming release, then we will be able to utilize the, the power of a REST compiler while building Next.js applications. So I'm really excited for that. Next feature that we should take a look at is server actions. Now, what are server actions? Now, with server actions, you don't need to manually create the different API endpoints such as slash, API, slash, whatever route, and repeat a lot of the same code. Instead, with server actions, you can create async functions inside a component itself. You can So you can call the specific function in a form so that you can create and update data. Now keep this in mind, server actions are slightly different than server components. Server components are mainly used for fetching data inside your components versus, versus uh, server actions are mainly for creating and updating data. So keep that in mind as you take a look at server actions and server components. But, but in Next.js 14 now, you can see that we don't need to necessarily do any of this code. So instead of calling it submit API here, as they show here in an example, we can just directly call create item, which is exactly what that specific submit API would internally call inside the API. All you need is this use server directive and that's it. And then you can call the form action equals create. And this is nothing new. It's just that it has become stable now. So we can start using it in production, which is pretty exciting. The server, server actions are one of my favorite features. So this is really exciting that they have finally stable now. Now, another benefit of using this specific feature is that instead of basically mutating data, re-rendering the page, redirecting can happen in one network round trip instead of several network round trips, because again, it's all in the same component. So we don't necessarily need to worry about any of, any of it. So this really helps us compose our application code a lot better. So I'm really excited for server actions. But in addition to server actions, there are a few other functionalities that they have provided. Specifically, they have provided a few other hooks as well. So for example, for caching, revalidating, redirecting, they have essentially provided us with a bunch more hooks. So for example, revalidate path for revalidating any cache data. So you can basically purge the cache data or revalidate it using revalidate path. You can redirect. You can use cookies to use read cookies and set cookies, handle optimistic UI updates, use form state to catch and display errors, and use form state hook to display different loading states on the client. So let's take a look at an example of a server action. So over here, we have a server action called as create use action, user action, and that's because it has a use server directive in here in line on line six. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom, then you will notice that we have this form that we can see on the right hand side. And this specific form is pretty straightforward. It has a username. And based on the username that we type, 
then we essentially can sign up easily as well. So for example, in the form here, we have an action called create user action. So the minute we submit, that is the minute we want to sign up, then it is going to call this specific function, async function called as create user action. Now this specific function is going to get the username uh, from the form data web API that we have then it's going to go ahead and create the user. But again, you will notice the new hook that we just took a look at, which is revalidating path. So it is going to revalidate our path direct us to slash home, which is slash the route page. So it's going to revalidate the cache data because as the user signs up. But in case of any errors, it's going to then log that error as well. So again, this is a very simple example, but this is just one example of server actions that because now they are finally stable. Now with partial pre-rendering, you can essentially create a suspense boundary that will allow you to essentially partially show a part of the page while your server data is still being retrieved. So for example, if you scroll down, they say that it's built on React Suspense and this is how it works. So for example, you create a suspense boundary with a card skeleton and the shopping cart will get rendered once, cart, once the data has been fetched for our cart. Similarly, we have another suspense boundary for products list skeleton. And after that data has been retrieved, then it, we show recommendation. With partial pre-rendering enabled, this creates a static shell based on a suspense boundaries. So what happens is that the, the suspense fallbacks in the shell are then replaced with dynamic components. So we can still see some sort of a banner or card based on the user. So this is how it looks like the static HTML shell. So the users will still be able to see some sort of a skeleton or partial data in general. And then as the data gets fetched and re-rendered, you'll get to see the entire page. Now, if you don't know what suspense is, it lets components communicate with each other while the data has is being fetched. So you see some sort of a loading skeleton. You can show some sort of a skeleton and you can create this boundary that we just saw. Now, again, this is a really new feature that they have talked about and it's still under development. So even though we can check it out and read about it, there are no new APIs that have been introduced. So there's nothing for us to do at, as of right now, but this is a feature that allows us to showcase dynamic content with a fast, faster static response as well. That's really awesome in general for now, from a Next.js point of view. There is also a brand new Next.js Learn course as well that Next.js has offered. And looking at the content of the specific course, it's quite comprehensive. Now, I also have a course on Next.js that you can check it out as well. But this also is a really good option for you to check out as they have provided us. You can, so you can check it out at nextjs.org slash learn to take the course. Now, lastly, there are also a few breaking changes if you upgrade to Next.js 14 along with the default version of Node.js that now Next 14 supports us. Now, as you upgrade your application to Next 14, let's say from Next 13 or a previous version of Next.js, then make sure you check out this specific section because this will tell you exactly what changes you need to make so that your Next 14 application is stable. So for example, make sure that you need to upgrade the Node.js version to 18.17 now then the breaking there are a few baking changes that they have provided the obvious one is that instead of at next slash font they have now next slash font then they have changed image response so, and now the import from next server has been to next og so you might need want to change that as well in case you're using image response at the same time domains is no longer available it's deprecated it will still continue to work, but again, it's deprecated. So you need to use a new pattern called as a remote patterns object, essentially, so that as they have gotten rid of domains altogether. So if you are configuring any specific domain, then this might be a common one that you want to take a look at. There are some additional enhancements, but you can also see that there is more verbose logging around fetch caching that has been enabled. And we can take a look at the docs to look at more. Again, make sure you check out this specific section because I've seen a lot of devs, they don't do that. They just go ahead and upgrade their application and then suddenly you see a bunch of errors or specific parts of the code that don't work for you. And I really don't want you to get into that position. So make sure you check out this specific section 
and follow it one by one and make the changes necessary and then see if your application works as intended and make sure you test it out fully and thoroughly so that you know that that thing is breaking in general. Now, I'm really excited that next year's 14 hasn't introduced any new APIs, but it has still given us our actions, which are essentially stable. And I hope you found this video useful as I cover all the features in next year's 14. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe because I plan to create more videos just like this one in the future. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.